Welcome back to part 14 of this tutorial series and in this video we're going to start handling click events with Angular and then we're going to display some feedback to the user every time they answer a question. So jumping back into our HTML we'll start off with the text based questions and we'll go on to this H4 which is each individual possible answer and we'll add an ng class which we've seen before and we'll give it the object and some name value pairs and we'll give it bg info which is that nice blue background and we'll give it that if dollar sign index so you haven't seen this before this is something specific to ng repeat and it will give you a number based index of the current iteration of the loop just like var i equals zero in a for loop for example so on the first iteration dollar sign index will equal zero on the second it will equal one etc so if dollar sign index is equal to quiz dot data service dot quiz question quiz dot active question dot selected so if the current index of the for loop is equal to the selected property of the currently active question give that answer the class of bg info so i think that sounded a bit more complicated than it is so of course in our data service we have the quiz questions and then we have the active question and each one has a selected property which we've yet to create the logic for but we will shortly but when a user clicks on, say, for example, this answer here, this selected will be changed to, to this index, which will be 3, because it's 0, 1, 2, 3. So selected for this particular answer, for, for this particular question, will now equal 3. And now in our ng class, we're checking if $index, which is the index of the ng repeat, if that is equal to the index that the user has selected, i.e. the answer that the user has clicked on, if that equals the index of the ng repeat, then give that particular answer the class of bg info. And then after this ng class, we want to add an ng click. And this ng click is where we'll actually change that selected flag every time the user clicks on a particular answer. So we will trigger a function we call select answer. And then into that we will pass in dollar sign index, which will be the index of the current iteration of the ng repeat. So if I come back into the quiz itself, we have each of these which has been printed out using the ng repeat. So the dollar sign index of this one will be 0, of this one will be 1, this one will be 2, of this one will be 3. So now for example if I click this one it will trigger that select answer function and pass in dollar sign index for this particular answer which in this case is 0, 1, 2. So it will pass 2 into that select answer function. And then inside that function, we'll set the selected flag for this particular answer to whatever dollar sign index was, which in this case we clicked on here, so it'll be two. So now we need to create this function. So we'll come into our quiz controller and we'll create vm.select answer equals select answer we'll come down to the bottom 
and we'll create function called select answer. And we need to pass it in an index. Inside here is data service dot quiz question vm dot active question dot selected equals index. And that's it. That's all we need for that function. No, oh, I've just noticed I need to add that S, save, and come into the browser, and we will start the quiz. And then we hit one of these answers, and every time we hit it, that ng class is kicking in, and the ng click is kicking in. And notice we're also changing up here. So let's run through that. So when we click, we're triggering the select answer function, which is passing in dollar sign index. So when we click here, it's passing in zero. When we click here, passing in one, passing in two, passing in three. And then that's setting the selected flag of this question to that index. And then we're using ng class to display bg info class on that particular answer if dollar sign index is equal to the selected answer which makes sense if we click here we're passing in dollar sign index which is 3 which means the selected for this question now equals 3 and then dollar sign index here is 3 and that is obviously equal to 3 or obviously equal to the selected which we passed in so now that gets bg info class and then up here in our progress area, if we scroll back up, you may not remember, but we said give it the class of button info if question dot selected does not equal null and button danger if it does. And it's defaulted to null, so that's why it was usually red. But then as soon as we click it and we're triggering this select answer function, it's no longer null, so now it will get the button info class which will give it the blue background and then it will also get the glyph icon dash pencil class which will give it the pencil logo and that's why we're getting that as well as the coloring on the background here and we can click on any one of these and it will automatically update and give some visual feedback for what's the selected answer and then we can continue and we get the next answer of course selected is currently null so none of these have a background and this is red with the question sign but if we click on something here we get a background that goes to a pencil and it turns blue all in real time and then in the next video we're going to take a look at finalizing the quiz controller and moving on to showing the user some results for those of you that haven't checked out my website yet I do a full article write-up for every single video that I put out on YouTube and that will include code snippets and other little things that will help you along. The link to the write-up for the current video is on the bottom left of the screen. And if you just want to continue watching this video series then just click the link in the center of the screen and we'll get started with the next video.